Hey guys, my name is Sam. We're at the Westcott Designs headquarters today in the install shop, and we're going to be walking you through the process of installing a low profile roof rack on the all new third gen Sequoias. Let's jump into it. Before we jump into the actual install, I just wanted to walk you real quickly through the two different options that you have for the front wind visor. The first one you're looking at here is our low cut wind visor. This one hugs the body of the Sequoia and eliminates wind noise. The second option is a little higher cut. This is totally a preference thing. If you like the look of one over the other, there is some possible wind noise with this. You'll see that selection on the website when you go to order your roof rack. So that part is up to you, but the install process is totally the same. All right, so we just wanted to lay everything out so you can kind of see what comes in the box. And we'd suggest you do the same. It just makes this process a little easier. We have the hardware already laid out here, but I wanted to show you how you'll be receiving it. Uh, it comes in this hardware pack and everything is in order from back to front. So if you look at this, in the very back, you've got the larger of the brackets and then the mid brackets. And in the front, you can tell these are the front brackets because they have the 3M sticky tape. And then up the middle, you have all of your hardware. All the hardware is included. You've got your uh, crossbars to the side panels. You've got your bracket hardware, uh, the hardware to secure the roof rack to the roof of the Sequoia. And of course, the patented bottle opener Westcott designs. So now we're going to take a second. We're going to assemble this. We're gonna keep everything kind of loose so that we can shift it around once we put it up onto the roof. So let's do that part now. All right, so we're gonna start assembling this. We start by attaching the crossbars to the side rails. Uh, we like to start in the middle and that's gonna uh, support your side rails here so they don't tip over and you scratch the powder coat. And for now, you're gonna take the bolt washer on the outside and thread that into the holes on the inside of the crossbars. Get those all started like so. Two per crossbar on every side. So technically four per crossbar to get these mounted. So once you start these, go through each 10 of these crossbars, hand tighten them all, and we'll check back in. All right, so now that we have all the cross members attached, this thing's starting to look like a roof rack, we're gonna go ahead and put on the brackets onto the roof rack before removing the existing roof rack and rails and bringing this up onto the Sequoia. There's a couple things to note. Uh, these brackets are directional. They go on a specific side. So if you look at these, there's three holes that are closer together. Those are gonna to point towards the front of the vehicle, both on the rear bracket and on the middle brackets here. Uh, the other thing to note, is that you wanna tighten these down pretty good so that they're held in place. You'll see that once we put these on here, if they're just hand tightened, they're gonna tip downwards. And when you go to put this on the vehicle, you don't want the roof rack falling down on the vehicle and scratching up your paint. So let's go ahead and put these brackets on real quick and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so installing these brackets, uh, the short side is gonna go up and on the inside of the side rails. And then as we talked about, these three holes that are closer together are gonna go towards the front of the vehicle. Uh, you have these bolts here with a 3 16 Allen head. Uh, you're gonna do a washer on either side. So bolt through the back, technically the outside of the uh, roof rail there. Another washer on the inside. And then you're gonna grab these nylock nuts and you're gonna tighten these on there. Let's do the other side real quick, same thing. Washer on the outside, another on the inside, and your nylock there. And then you're gonna wanna tighten these down. This is the part where we, where we mentioned that uh, if these are loose when you set it up on top of the vehicle, we don't want you to scratch the paint. So just get these in place. And what you don't want is these wiggling too much. When we get further along, if you need to loosen these, once you've got it in place to get that lined up with your uh, rail mounting holes up on top of the Sequoia, we can loosen them again. But for now, we're gonna do that all the way up and get all these mountain, mounting brackets installed. So we're gonna mount the uh, middle brackets here now. Same thing, you've got two holes that attach to the inside of your rail. We've got your bolt here, washer on the outside, five or three sixteenths hole. And thread that through, another washer, your nylock nut. And same thing on this side. 
And again, let's go ahead and tighten these down. All right, so now we've got this roof rack assembled. For the most part, we've got the rear and the mid brackets attached, all of our crossbars attached. You're gonna notice we're gonna leave the front brackets and the wind visor off of the rack for now. That's just gonna allow us some more flexibility once we get it up on the roof to make the adjustments that we need, make sure we're not scratching any paint. So the next step is gonna to be to get up there and remove the existing hardware from the top of the Sequoia, and then we're gonna put this up on top and we'll show you how to install it from there. We're going to start removing the hardware that secures the stock rack to the vehicle. There are a total of eight bolts at the four mounting points that need to come out first. You can see those bolts here. Go ahead and remove them all. Those eight bolts allow the top rack to be removed from the vehicle. We're going to remove that and set it aside and out of our way. The rest of the rack removal is pulling apart the rails and remaining mounting hardware. There's a spacer plate that sits freely after removing the first bolts. Once you remove those, you'll see you have access to the next set of bolts below. We're going to go ahead and remove all eight of those as well. After all four supports have been removed, you'll see you have access to the last bolt on each section that holds the rails to the vehicle. These can be a little tricky to remove. They don't quite bite while backing them out. So you can see here that we used a small pry tool to lift up as we backed out the bolt. Once you've removed the last four bolts, your stock rails are now attached only by plastic clips. There's no graceful way to do this part. We used a larger pry bar to get started by carefully lifting from the rear of the rails and popping that first clip. Once you've gotten it started, you can use your hands to pull up and outwards and disconnect the remaining clips. Remove the stock rails and set them aside. Now that you've removed the entire stock rack, we're going to place the new rack on top of the vehicle. We like to lay down some protection in the front just to ensure that we don't scratch anything in the process. You'll most likely need some help to lift and walk this rack and set it down gently on top of the vehicle. You can see here that the proper placement of the rack lines up with the existing mounting holes. The pin coming upward should be in the middle of the three holes on both the rear and the middle mounting brackets. Remember, we still haven't installed the front mounting brackets. We will get to those shortly. We're going to go ahead and get started securing this rack to the roof. Insert the bolt down through the mounting plates with a washer on either side and the nut at the bottom. Getting the bolt to thread with the nut can be a little tricky, so our expert tech Warren here uses a little trick to make this step a little easier. Grab a wrench and place a small piece of paper on top of the wrench. Take the nut and press it firmly down into place inside the wrench. The paper will hold the nut in place and keep it from falling through the wrench. Place the washer on top of the nut and use the wrench to put it all in place as you slowly thread the bolt from the top down. Much easier than trying to hold it all in place with your fingers. Go ahead and do this for the four brackets installed using the outermost holes on either side of each bracket. The last bolt is threaded into an existing hole in the roof of the vehicle. This is where you may need to loosen up the mounting brackets to properly align the holes before installing the last bolt in each bracket. We went ahead and loosened these up as needed and installed the center bolt in each bracket. Now with the two rear and two mid brackets secured, we're going to install the front mounting brackets. Go ahead and peel the backing off of the 3M sticky tape and carefully line up the holes and stick the front brackets in their place. The stuff is strong, so do this part slowly to ensure proper alignment. Same as the rest of the brackets, these get a bolt with a washer on either side, followed by the nylock nuts to secure the brackets to the side rails. Go ahead and do that for both of the front mounting brackets. Our next step is to secure the front wind visor. This is the exact same process as attaching all of the cross support bars that we did previously. Two bolts with washers per side threaded into the existing holes in the crossbar mounted to the back of the windscreen. With that installed, it's time to move on to one of the most important steps. No roof rack is complete without the famous Westcott bottle openers. We're going to go ahead and install those. 
it's not a bad idea to add a little assembly lube to the four bolts you'll be using to secure the bottle openers. We're going to do that here before adding the bottle opener hardware to the rack. There's a pre-existing cutout hole on the rear of the rack on either side. Simply add the bottle opener, insert the bolt with a washer and the nylock nut on the inside, and tighten to secure. All right guys, so now that you have the rack up on top of the Sequoia, go ahead and secure those mounting brackets to the roof of the Sequoia. If you remember from the previous step, we had tightened down the side rails to the brackets just to keep those brackets from flopping down and scratching the paint. Once you've got the brackets secured to the roof, you can work your way around and start tightening all of the hardware. And that completes the install portion of the Sequoia roof rack. This truck's going out to the customer in the next 30 minutes. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to drop comments below or give the shop a call. We'll see you on the next video.